Hi, you guys. So I'm not even ready yet, but I feel like I meant to talk to you while I get ready and maybe I'll put a timestamp for like when the reading starts or something because I put the camera on and this happened and I'm like, what is, it was just too beautiful. And I know that light doesn't last forever. And I was going to put my flash on and I just got this vibe. Don't touch it. So this is all natural lighting. Um, I literally just started putting this together. I was waiting to light the candle because, you know, I'm in an off grid RV with no cover and it's, you know, high of 80 today. So, you know, <laughs> you do your best. So, um, it's hot as balls. And I was like, yeah, I don't really want to light a candle. Can we just like do a, you know, they're like, no, we'll light one, but just wait until we get started. So, so here we are. So welcome. Welcome. I call upon your higher self, my higher self. I call upon our spirit guides and all the energies that watch out for us, the entities that look over us. Thank you, spirit, for being here today. Thank you for this magical, magical lighting. Thank you, Ra, for the natural light. You know what I mean? Like, it's just too beautiful. I wasn't even sure, like, what direction we were going in today or what was happening or, you know, like, this kind of stuff, like me playing around. I, you know, like, just now I was listening to classical music and I usually, like, listen to music and do stuff and but that's kind of cool. You know, and then I kind of like, you know, move things around. Maybe some of you wanted to see this because you've been thinking about doing this yourself. And you're like, how do you like put things together? How do you also uh, I do want to tell you this, that um, I spent many, many years working in some type of fashion, decorating. Um, I did windows, you know, like shopping windows. I mean, so it's, it's, I'm an artist. So it's just like years of me, like working on things. So, you know, I just go with my gut or like what I feel like spirit wants, you know, or sometimes it's like that, like that little flick will be there and I get the vibe from spirit, like stop, like, you know, you just go with your energy. <laughs> you go with the energy. You go with your with your own flow. Like what feels good. Oh, hi you guys. I missed you. I really missed you. I've um I'm you know, I'm just going to preface this by telling you I am doing my best to not make this about me, but you know, I am such a empathic, loving, feeling being and um I've repressed my love and my emotions and my feelings for others. I've uh, held back. I'm doing it right now because it wasn't always accepted. It wasn't always cool. And um, I'm still working through a lot of stuff, a lot of energy, old energy. This is the eighth moon cycle. Welcome to our reading. I don't know if we're going to add anything to this or what we're going to do, but the birds are singing and the there's no camera light. There's no, you know what I mean? This is all like natural lighting and the candle and I just want to go with it and I just want to be here with you guys. But if you're new here, welcome. If you've been coming here and supporting um, me and this work and yourself, thank you so much. I am in gratitude for you, for everything you've done, from the contributions to the prayers to just the words of support, um, just everything. You guys, this is, I feel so blessed. I feel like I have the coolest tribe on the fucking internet. You know, like, I feel like we are a really cool group of people who are very deep feeling and um, we've had to harden our hearts. I'm gonna harden my heart. You know that song? I'm gonna swallow my tears. Right? Oh, I'm gonna turn and leave you here. I don't know if I can get there. <laughs> right? It's like, she's gonna harden her heart. That's a good song, man. Fucking Pat Benatar. I think that's Pat. I'm almost positive. Um, you know, but there's, there's this hardening of our hearts. This very, very thick shell that we have yet to crack. Some of us have maybe put cracks in, some of us have lost pieces of the shell, but some of us are still firmly in there. You know, when a baby bird's coming out and like they keep trying to crawl back into the shell, <laughs> right? 
It's like babies are born and like, what the fuck just happened? I was in this like warm, cozy place. It was a little weird, but whatever. Or I guess it wouldn't be weird to you, right? Because you don't know any different. <laughs> I'm saying it's weird because I think to me, I probably, that's probably what I thought because <laughs> I've done this so many times. I was probably like, oh shit, where am I now? Because I think when we're that, like when we're growing in our bodies, I think our mental, uh, emotional uh, soul bodies are present while we're growing into what we are and I believe when we come out we are what we are and then over time our environment shapes us changes us you know molds us into who we are and who we're not and now I'm getting this vibe from spirit that we no longer have to shape shift in the way that we've been shape shifting to survive we can shape shift to stay alive Yes, but it's like we don't need to keep changing our insides or our outsides or both, you know, um, by force because we're not allowed to be ourselves. I mean, think about it. I mean, right now, I mean, right now in society that I live in, in this moment on Moon Day, of course, and Moon Day on a Monday, I was born on a Moon Day. We're in the waning crescent, so we're in the last phase, the eighth phase, the moon phase. But like when we're in that energy, it's about the it's about the like rest and restore. Like trying to like look back at everything that happened over that moon cycle, what worked, what didn't. Imagine being, okay, and for those of you who are here like that, oh my gosh, to me, 644, you are like my ultimate like warrior spirits on this planet but uh i was gonna say a black gay transgender man whether you're going from a man to a woman or a woman to a man doesn't matter but in the society that i'm living in right now in my world in my country at this time this present time of societal standards whatever that is the hardest fucking avatar world whatever you want to call it experience culture i mean can you imagine like the bravery the sheer courage it takes i mean sorting out the bathrooms dealing with evil mean people who like you know now don't get me wrong I know that there are predators in all packages. I understand that. But there's this energy that has been weighing us all down. These labels, this imagery, spirits trying to get us to get out of that egg and like move forward. Especially those of us who were born after the age of Aquarius came in. Because I believe those who were born before the age of Aquarius, the only way they shift and change is if they are meant to shift and change. And like they were brought here to be those elders, you know what I mean? They were brought here to, um, to walk the path before us, to pave the way. Exactly. When they say pave the way, they're saying because right before it was just earth, dirt roads, until someone invented paving. I mean, tar is, you know, not good for us, not, but, but still, we're grateful for paved roads, aren't we? We're grateful for a clear, clean path because it's so much easier. But if you go off into the world and say you want to go hiking, are you going to stop where it says the pavement ends here? rough road ahead, you know, uh, proceed with caution. You know, if you're like, listen, man, my car's not up for this. I don't, you know, I need to get a new tire. This probably isn't a good idea. All right. That's probably a wise idea. Maybe park the car there and hike up the road. Maybe you'll find something, but it's always on the roads that are less paved or not paved at all that we really find the mysteries, the hidden waterfalls, right? The cool forests, the places, you know, 
the out of reach, the magical, off the beaten path. And that has to go with everything too, right? The way we look at the world. And I'm getting this vibe, like this really shaky vibe. I have, I have this, in, so either some of you are going through something where you're having tremors or seizures, or maybe you're getting the shakes because you're not, you know, drinking enough water, eating enough food, something. I'm just, my whole body's feeling really shaky. And, um, and I get the vibe that some of you are like really freaked out about it, you know, and you're like, is something wrong with me? And the more you think about it, the more freaked out about it you get. You don't go to the doctor, you don't, you know, sit with spirit or whatever. You're just like freaking yourself out. And I feel like for some of you, it's just another diversion that you're using. And for others of you, it's your body telling you to listen, to respond, that it needs X, Y, and Z from you. I started this out. I was going to start talking about, you know, that I had this massive death in my family in my blood and bone family last week. And every single day since my mentor, my second mom died, ooh, 11, 16, which is also the number nine, um, which means you're almost there, keep going. It made me realize, you know, death comes for us all. And none of us are getting out of here alive. And I know I say this and I joke about it and stuff, but when an elder, a really important elder passes, it's important to mourn them for all they've done and for all they've given. 1153, which is also the number 10 and spirit saying like, we're done. We're done with the past. And I, I really realized that with this aunt that passed because I've always kind of seen my family as like the nesting dolls. They call them Russian, nest, Russian nesting dolls. I'm not 100% if they started in Russia. And that's why they call them that. Or, you know, because I feel like a lot of cultures have something similar. But anyway, if you know what I'm talking about, it's the doll within the doll within the doll within the doll. And they're all different sizes, right? And that's the imagery that spirit wants us to remember and to honor the ancestors and that, and look at how much they gave and look at how much they did. Blessed Anna, uh, you know, our beloved tribe member, Anna, she, for Beltane, she went to Glastonbury. She was like, I want to do something magical. I want to do, you know, and she went and um, thank you, Anna. I finally figured out how to read the live chat. I don't I think it was where the phone was stuck, where my phone was stuck. And then I, anyway, long story short, Anna, I had asked in the, in the full moon reading, if you guys watch the full moon and Scorpio reading, I had asked if you guys have any questions to, um, you know, I would answer them. So Anna, I'm going to do something special for your question. She, I, I didn't, I neglected to write it down because I don't think it was like meant to, you know, I'm paraphrasing here. I mean, I took a screenshot of your question so that I get it right when I do do the reading, but I, I am definitely getting a vibe from spirit that we're going to do a reading just around that. So thank you, Anna, for the inspiration. Thank you for the question. It will be answered. I don't know how, when, where, um, in real time today, like I said, it's the 15th moon day, May, 2023. Um, Wednesday, the 17th is my eight year anniversary of meeting, uh, Alder, my husband. And so we're going, um, somewhere really special. I'm excited to share that with you guys. I will share that with you. It'll probably be on Lula's life. I don't think I'm going to do any readings that day because it's just about me and him, but I definitely will take video and, and things like that because the place we're going to is really sacred. I'm really cool. And I'm super excited about it. So thank you for sending us good vibes and energy for that um and then the next day on um, thursday i don't know what we're gonna do um but it's my 12 year uh, anniversary living in the pacific northwest i lived in uh, oregon for six years and washington now for six years i'm finally living up on the olympic peninsula it took me you know 12 years to get up here but i did it and um actually no i can't even say that because i didn't really even know the olympic peninsula existed until i met alder so it's almost 
eight years because we met in May and then he introduced me to the Olympic Peninsula in the summer. I don't remember if it was May or June, but it was somewhere in there, I believe. Um, Anyway, I just fell in love with it. I, you know, all I, that's all I did was talk about it. I was like, these forests are, you wouldn't even believe it. Like, you know, growing up on the South side of Chicago, I was like, this shit doesn't exist, you know? Um, and people were like, oh yeah, the Olympic, you know, mountains, the rainforests are like, it's really fucking cool there. And, you know, people say there's portals there and there's aliens and Sasquatch and yes, all of the above. I have, I have witnessed things that I'm like, holy shit. Like there is so much magic here. It's unbelievable. I've seen, I've seen so many different creatures. Uh, I mean, literally like I, I feel really blessed to be here. That's why I know that, um, everything is going according to spirits timeline and not mine. And I'm trying to coexist in that energy, but man, my fucking aunt's death, man, it like knocked the wind out of me. Like I just because, you know, it's one thing. Oh my gosh, you guys, I don't normally do this, but look at that fucking spider. Look at that big spider. Sorry. I just wanted to get it. Oh, did you see it? I think it went. Oh my gosh. If that isn't like a message from my aunt Kim, I don't know what is right. So spiders have been coming to me like crazy lately, but like, I didn't even know like that one was there. Like, holy shit. You know, um, there's some really powerful uh, stuff at play, and I urge you to please research spider spirit animal, spider, spider spirit medicine. Uh, they have been coming around a lot, and it's not just that it's this time of year. They have so much knowledge. They are the web weavers. It doesn't surprise me that I'm talking about my Aunt Kim, and I literally look, looked up and saw this. I mean, and I'm not even freaked out that that massive big black fucking spider lives in my house. Cause I'm like, I'm like, hi Kim. You know what I mean? Uh, that's really wild. Also that it's so black, right? Because we're in the, the very end of the moon phase, you know? And I feel like we're warriors 1655. I feel like we are warriors. Oh, 1655. Oh my gosh, you guys, 1655 is our angel number, but also add that together. Five and and five is 10 and then six and one 17. But if you add that together, it's eight. And what is eight infinity? What is a spider infinity? Eight legs. What did I just say? I'm about to have my eight year wedding anniversary with my husband. Like it is, things have come full circle. 1720 when I look down, uh, which is also an, another comes in number 10. So you may have been seeing these numbers, these patterns, these things. I feel so like amped up with spirit right now. Thank you, spirit. Thank you all for being here. Um, I feel like we need to pull some cards. We're just going to keep talking about things and what's going on. Thank you, spirit. Thank you, grandmother spider. But the spider is the web weaver. You know, they bring people together and maybe, you know, this is a sign from spirit for you to do the same. What I got from my aunt when she passed, which was like so hard for me and I'm, I'm like going to really try hard not to cry. Um, but what I got from my aunt was like the way the nesting dolls were is the way I always kind of saw it. Like my niece, Danielle, out of all of my nieces and nephews, I feel like in the next generation of us, I feel like she's really powerful. I feel like her, my cousin Danny, and my cousin Billy, I feel like there's something um, with that. Like, Actually, no, my cousin Billy and Danny are in my age. I always think they're younger because they were born so much younger than me. Um, but they're as powerful as I am in this age. What I'm saying is, but when I saw the nesting dolls, I saw my, like the women, right? I saw the divine feminine, even though Danny and Billy both are beautifully blessed with, you know, that strong divine feminine from strong mothers. Um, I saw my grandmother. I saw, uh, my aunt Kim. Then I saw me and I saw my niece Danielle and I saw it like so clear and even now, um, I, I peeked and saw that my, my nieces, you know, have had more children, at least the last time I looked. And one of my nieces had uh, a, a daughter named Josephine. And it was like the second I saw her face and her name, I was like, I think she's the one. Do you know what I'm saying? It's like, and I realized that in each generation, we have to have 
the elder. We have to have the one that speaks, you know, sense, the one that has compassion, the one that is strong, but benevolent and loving, but also that they have danced in the dark, you know, like my Aunt Kim, you know, it didn't surprise me that it was black like that. My, my Aunt Kim had dark hair. She always had like this darkness about her um, that wasn't hers. She was this loving, gorgeous being, but she carried around this heavy weight, this darkness of everybody else's shadow. Anybody who would, you know, imprint with her in any capacity. She took care of so many children and people. And, you know, it doesn't, you know, I'm sad that she died at 61 last week, but I also, it doesn't surprise me. You know, I'm, I, I said in, in my last Lula's Life uh, or Tallulah Talk on my, my channel, Lula's Life, the last one I just put, um, it's talk about your path and purpose and, you know, going to the beat of your own drum. I highly recommend you watch that. I mean, even the last like half hour is so powerful. I felt like my Aunt Kim was like really working through me and she's so powerful and she's, she's literally, I said this before, but it's true. She's a hundred million times more powerful now. Like in, in her life, she was so powerful, but like in her death, it's like, wow. Like I, I just feel really blessed, but I, I, I can't explain it any other way is to say I really do feel like a torch was patched, passed on to me. And so that's why I feel like the last week I had to be in my grief, my sadness, my, you know, just, I had to go through so much stuff and just downloading things from the family and ancestral, you know, trauma that I had to work through that she had worked through. And just, I mean, I'm still going through it. I feel like I'm going to be going through this shedding for a while, probably until the anniversary of her death uh, next year. So by May 9th, 2024, I feel like my life is going to be in a completely different place where I won't even recognize it, which I'm so excited about. And I feel like this week, everything is coming together, especially in real time tomorrow, you guys, Jupiter is uh, going into Taurus and it will be there until May 25th of 2024. And it's really magical. I'm going to do some type of reading about that. I don't know if it's going to be a pickle reading. Anna, your question was really important and pivotal because you had asked about energy till the end of the year or something. And um, I'm wondering if somehow that's going to be tied into that. I also feel like it may be a pickle reading, the Jupiter and Taurus, because I feel like, you know, the spirit had me... Uh, put down some highlights from Braca Goldsmith's uh, special about it. And I'm going to read them to you. Uh, it was, um, these were the highlights for the next year. Yoga, crafting, music, fashion, arts, nature, luxury, meditation, earth. Now, obviously, you know, these are Taurus energies too, right? very, very, very big divine feminine. She actually had me write it in different colors, you know, so divine feminine was in red. Um, the rest of the things were in purple Jupiter going in two words, whereas in blue and Taurus was in red. So if that means anything to you guys, um, I don't know if that means anything. I'm going to give you a little, hold on. I don't think it really matters what the words are, but you see what I did there. So maybe those colors will mean something to you guys. Maybe they mean something to you now. Um, also it's, um, you know, Mercury went direct, blessed be, let's drink some water for that. Cheers. We made it through another Mercury retrograde and eclipse season. Cheers. Congratulations to us. Like seriously, no shit. Congratulations to us because that was some fucking shit. I mean, I don't know about you guys when I looked down, it was 2309 and then it just like kept going all these numbers. So I don't know what it went, what you guys went through, but like eclipse season, Mercury retrograde, you know, like for me, it's like, I lost my, my, one of the, to me personally, and my mom's side of the family, the most powerful matriarch in our family, <sighs> you know, uh, I don't know. What did you guys go through? Please comment below. If you would love to, you know, share with us, we'd love to hear it. 2337, you know, what are you going through? Uh, anyway, I just got this huge thing from Braca also that like after Mercury went direct, that um, we had the green light to start new projects. But if you wanna really start something that you love, starting it tomorrow, um, Jupiter going into Taurus, that energy, I would use that. I'm gonna try and get this up and posted today as soon as possible, but maybe I'll put a shorts out for that or something. Um, but yeah, green light to start new projects or sign any important contracts, etc. It's okay, we have the green light moving forward on Tuesday. Okay, so if there's something you can wait until Tuesday, I get the vibe. Um, is that is that for everybody, Spirit? 
it's just a really good energy, especially because um, Jupiter going into Taurus like that, you know, Taurus is all about like, you know, um, money, relationships, our self-worth, you know, um, it's about material things, our value, you know, what do we love? So she put here, um, reclaiming our health over the next year, you know, 24, 46. What are you, what do you want to reclaim, you know, in this next year while Jupiter is going to be in Taurus? Because don't forget this either, you know, Jupiter is the biggest planet and Spirit wanted me to read this, okay? I'd written this down some time ago, but Jupiter is the biggest planet, okay? And for those of you who are ruled um, by Jupiter, which let me see, let me look in my notes here. I know this is one of my old notebooks. I know that I know it's in here. So those ruled by Jupiter are Sagittarius, which I know because I am. Um, Pisces. I think it's just Sagittarius and Pisces. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments below. Um, so we're talking about the ninth house and the twelfth house, which is really interesting, right? Because you know, look at um, the energy we're in right now with Pisces as well. Um, Hold on. So Spirit wanted me to go back to Jupiter. Sorry, I didn't want to get off track too much. So Jupiter's the biggest planet, right? And the biggest planet is going to have the most influence because it's the biggest and because we're all energy. So if it's the biggest ball of energy out there, you know, so it's aren't we grateful that Jupiter is the biggest planet because Jupiter represents luck, faith, belief system, fate, philosophy, and adventure. So over the next year, while Jupiter is in Taurus, this is a good time to like really work on ourselves, our home, like really getting in there. Like, who are we? Oh, sorry. I don't know what that is. Our neighbor was like cutting stuff down yesterday, the day before. And then, um, you know, the traffic's been crazy around here because the weather, like I live in the Pacific Northwest. So this was the first weekend that it was like the whole weekend was like 80 degrees sunny and the biggest festival that they do the entire year in Washington. It was like, I think it was the hundredth year or something, or it's been over a hundred years, but it was a really big deal. So it's been nuts. Okay. So here's the spider. Holy shit. Here she comes. Okay. Do you not want me to <gasps> look at how big she is? Oh my God. I will not freak out because I know she loves me. I love you too. I love you, sweet spider. Oh, thank you, grandmother. We're blessed by your by your presence. Thank you. Thank you. We are blessed by her presence. Okay, so wow can you believe that can you believe that oh my goodness oh my goddess so um if she's gonna make her debut she's gonna make her debut don't freak out don't freak out i won't freak out either i feel like i feel your fear don't do it don't do it if you freak out i'll freak out so let's just be calm you know i'm the one sitting here in like a sundress with like nothing on under it not to be tmi but like it's hot as balls so like i'm all like sitting with my legs crossed right now away from the table as far as possible i'm sorry i'm sorry but oh anyway that's a big in she's a big in i love her though i love your grandmother i love you grandmother you know i love you i love you i love your spirit i love you kim and I just ask, please do not freak any of us out. If you're going to come in, just come in slowly, quietly, chill out. And, um, yeah, don't, don't run too fast. We'll be good. Cause that was a healthy one. Healthy, you know, it's, that's the thing. Spiders can't move very fast or they try not to. They reserve that energy because they don't eat very often. But when they do, when they're healthy like that, they can move a little quicker. <laughs> But, you know, don't fear the spider. Shit. See, I'm sorry. I don't want to bring the fear in. But I love them. I really do. Like, they've always been a huge part of my life. And, and I was terrified of them for years. And, you know, ever since um, we've had a different relationship, I've been fine. But I'm not going to lie. I'm like, wow, that is like, that's a big one. And I don't believe that they are, I don't believe there are any poisonous spiders in Washington. Like there are, but like they don't live here where I live. Do you know what I'm saying? I think it's just a big, beautiful, healthy, beautiful spider. So research the spirit medicine. Maybe this is for us to get over that fear, all of us. Because I say I'm okay with it until she's like, I was like, I was okay with it when she was up there. 
<laughs> and I was happy for her to come in, but now I'm like, okay, you can go back up now. <laughs> like, either come in and sit with us so I can see you or like go somewhere that you are, you know. Yeah. Okay. Sorry about that, you guys. Sorry, not sorry. So Jupiter, getting back to Jupiter and Taurus and trying not to be freaked out by everything that touches me. Come on, you guys. I need your support. I need your support. Let's breathe in. Breathe in healthy energy. Especially think about this. If you're watching this, nothing's happened. I'm okay. I'm all right. And you're not even here. So what fear do you have? That's what Spirit just said. That's awesome. Thank you, Spirit. Okay. So with that being said about Jupiter ruling luck, faith, belief, fate, philosophy, adventure, that's why this Jupiter and Taurus is so special because Taurus is an earth sign. And um, I don't know about you, but like every person I've ever known that's had Taurus in their chart or heavy Taurus in their chart, uh, especially in certain placements, they're just really beautiful, loving people. Yeah, they might be a little stubborn, but they're funny and they're cool and they're creative. And, you know, so it didn't surprise me that the key words were crafting, music, fashion, arts, because every Taurus I've ever known loved all of those things. Very creative. Food, getting in touch with their body, with nature, getting grounded. So I'm hearing for the next year, like really get grounded in our food, get grounded, um, you know, just with everything in our lives, you know, just getting really connected to the Taurian energy. So research Taurus energy more. Those were just a few highlights, but definitely like, like focusing on money, but looking at money is such a good thing. There's a short spirit had me create recently about finances. So I'm curious to see when that will uh, surface because that is a big thing, right? If we focus on our scarcity, instead of focusing on our abundance, then all we're going to get is the scarcity right? So spirit wants us to focus on our abundance and being grateful every single day and telling the people you love that you love them, looking them in the eyes and saying, I love you. Thank you for being in my life. And, you know, I remember one time I tried to be really loving to a certain family member and they literally told me to stop being queer and um, that I was so fucking weird. And why do I have to make everything weird? Why do I have to blah, blah, blah? And then I said, I was just, you know, I don't, I don't know. I was just, I love you. I was just trying to, and, and I'm like, you know, and they basically like told me to my face that they didn't love me. I even said, I'm like, well, we're family. They're like, yeah, but you know, I don't like you. And I, I don't love you. I don't love you. And I was like, uh, 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 I, like, and I realized that they meant it. And that's when I stopped trying. That's when I gave up. That's when I was like, okay, you know what? This is it. I'm done. This energy, everything this person tells me, all this energy they're giving off tells me. They're telling me, they're showing me that they don't want me around, that they don't want me in their orbit. They don't want me, you know. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to respect this. And it's been hard, but, you know, sometimes we have to do what we have to do. By the way, bottom of the deck before I even started shuffling before I even started shuffling. Come on, why isn't this going into focus? It's being really weird right now. My camera's being really weird right now. Very weird what's happening. Oh, it's doing that thing where it freezes. Hey, isn't that funny? We're at the end of Mercury retrograde, like Mercury just went direct with it. Just goes to show you, right? Like it doesn't happen in an instant. That energy's still gonna linger for a minute. So number 48, Angel of Balance. So let's see if they actually want, Oh, when I looked down, it was 32 or 33 and then it went to 33. So 33, 33. Interesting too, that when my aunt passed, like all the numbers from her death came out to the number three and I was like, Oh, and I looked down 33, 44. And I thought, Oh my gosh, this is like so freaking powerful. Like I, I mean, there's just been so many things that are happening and, um, and what are you saying spirit? Okay. Hold on. They want me to get back before we go back to the cards. They want me to get back to what we were talking about before. Um, grandmother, aunt Kim spider came in. 
um, the money thing. It's really serious. Your relationship with money and, and your self-worth has got to change. This may just be for one person, but this is a message for all of us. Our self-worth and our confidence must change. And this year is going to show us that. Spirit is going to grant us like all of these wishes. All of these wishes are going to come true for us over the next year. And it's going to be one of those things where that angel of mercy, like I feel like that angel of balance came in for a reason. Also, I'm feeling for some of you, 48 was an age, was an age or is an age or there's something about the number 48. It also comes out to the number 12, if that means anything. And that comes down to the lowest denominator, three. So um, something also I'm hearing that you're going to get, we're all going to be getting things this year in threes, like think of has like has one good thing happened for you since new earth has birthed so to speak since march 2023 since since around like march 21st since spring slash fall equinox like whatever you're you know wherever you live we have both hemispheres in this tribe so since then of this calendar year since then what has changed in your life 35 25 35 26 what has changed? What is, there's got to be one thing, one positive thing that you can be like, that happened. Spirit's like, that was your like thing that spirit's like, yes, keep going. Now, the more you think positive, the more you bring that energy of abundance. And I, I don't care if every day, every morning you're like, I am so wealthy, you know, I am healthy, wealthy and wise, you know, if you want to just keep saying that. But remember when you're saying that you're bringing that to you. So, you know, don't just say you're wise. If you actually haven't learned the lessons, if you skipped over the base knowledge, right? If you're going after something just to get something in return, remember that spirit feels you. It's a vibrational energy so vibration meets vibration you know I, I was like I was starting to get upset with spirit yesterday because I was like I can't shake this fucking sadness man like and my aunt's like you're grieving babe like she used to always like she would say things like if I was like upset she'd be like it was, oh I'm gonna start crying but I just heard her in my head like you know she's like you're grieving babe like it's okay like you know like let yourself breathe like like my god it just happened you know like she was she was that voice of reason and let Aunt Kim, call in Aunt Kim, man. You you are welcome to call on her as the voice of reason. She will be with you. She is an angel for sure. An angel of balance. Like she's back in there. Thanks, Kim. Oh man, I can like really see her. Oh, I love her and I love you guys. And uh, thank you for holding space for me during this. Like this has been fucking heavy. This has been a hard one. <laughs> Fuck, I'm sorry. <laughs> The hardest part is that she's been coming to me like in so many different ways and uh and I know it's her, you know what I mean? Like I can't like there's no there's no second guessing it. Uh so you know, call on those spirit guides and those family members, like they're looking out for you. The ancestors they're there. And if you are in the you know, if you're watching this right now, you are in the path of the nesting dolls of your family. You are the one in your family that's gonna break that chain. You are the one. And, you know, and it could even be your child would be the next one for your generation. If like they're practicing what you're practicing or you're, you know what I mean? All of you are at different levels. You're all different places. Some of you are still hiding your witch. Some of you are still hiding your gifts and hiding who you are. And I'm begging you this next year, you have a family and us. You know, I, I, I wrote this poem yesterday. I, I, in Mother's Day, I, yesterday, I felt like if you've ever seen Anchorman, I am telling you, it keeps coming up because it makes me laugh, but like, because Anchorman is free on YouTube right now, and I've seen it a gazillion times. I used to own it. It was like my go to movie to watch when I was drunk, when I would come home, and I knew I'd probably just like pass out, and like, I wanted something to watch while I was like, you know. Um, by the way, this keeps coming too. Look at that. That's an ant. These massive ants keep coming in like that big you saw how big that spider was that spider was right the ants too like so get it like my aunt who passed away i've been getting like these massive ants and ants teach us about patience but also community and spiders teach us about patience too right a spider will hang in its web and will like do its thing and you know it will it will uh wait and wait until the food comes until they have to seek it out, until they're strong enough to seek it out. And I'm getting this vibe from you guys too, you know. Um, I'm hearing from my aunt, don't 
be a hermit like I was. This is a message to at least one person. She, she was talking to me about this recently about, um, you know, I remember that about her, you know, like she didn't really, she wasn't good at jobs or being out with people. It's like, you know, people are like, oh, you're good. People think that because you're good with people that you're good at a job that is around with a lot of people. And it's like, no, it's the opposite. It's like people like myself, my aunt Kim, and I don't know if my, my niece is like this, but like the energy, like when it's too loud and it's too much and it's too, too, you know what I mean? I hope maybe, maybe my niece is like, you know, 3.0, you know what I mean? Like maybe she's going to be like the version that can handle things better because of what she was raised in. You know what I mean? All the chatter, all of the internet, the bullshit, the fucking, you know, phones, cell phones and all that. Like my aunt Kim and I didn't have that growing up. She grew up in the sixties in the seventies and I grew up in the seventies and the eighties, you know, very, very different, a uh, very different time. The very first computer I ever saw was in my senior year was the first time that like they entered a classroom and I was like, wow. And they were using it for art and they were showing how you can make art through a computer. I mean, it was like, you know, we're talking like, you know, the old video games and like Pitfall and Qbert and Tron inspired shit. You know what I mean? It was very different. So, um, anyway, Basically, I'm sorry if I went off on a tangent. I'm not trying to make this about me. I'm just like, I'm just doing my best. To, I cannot not be myself. And uh, and I was trying to put off doing readings and trying to, you know, whatever. And Spirit's like, no. They're like, just, you know, it's moon day. And I had planned on doing a reading today. I actually was hoping to do a pick a reading of some kind. Um, but I just don't have the energy because, you know, this, this whole experience has just sapped it out of me. But also, I'm in a massive transformational period and I can feel it, and um, I know, like, this Jupiter and Taurus is going to, like, fucking change the game for all of us. Um, also, Spirit wanted me to point out that this Mercury um, retrograde, um, anything, uh, complete what we started on or before the retrograde, which was April 20th. So, I also um, got in quotes, Sagittarius. So I don't know if that means anything to a Sagittarius or it was a Sagittarius energy. I've been putting out some readings with like new moon in Sagittarius. We had some readings where we spoke of the full moon in Sagittarius too. So the full moon in Scorpio reading, the live reading was really interesting. We spoke a lot about that. So maybe it's being, maybe you're being called to go watch that reading. It was in black and white. Um, I actually am surprised they didn't have me shoot this in black and white, but uh, I think it's because... Uh, the lighting was just so beautiful. Anyway, so really important for us to finish that and work on that. And if not, I feel like the next retrograde, it's just going to like, you know, bring itself back up. So, you know, work with it as much as you can. But yeah, I'm just getting a lot about health and healing. Um, when I was watching Braca's Jupiter and Taurus episode, it was just, that was a huge, huge, uh, and then other things I've read and, and watched on it, that's what I'm getting also. It's just health and healing. Um, also starting a business in health and healing, uh, new growth in a business that's around health and healing. You know, maybe you've been wanting to be a Reiki or maybe you've just been like, you know, working like on the side as a Reiki, but you're like, you know, I think I want to take this to the next level. I'm hearing, yes, you can do that. Because also remember, you can do distance Reiki. You don't even have to be there. You don't even have to be touching the person. You can do it from far away. Um, some of us are natural Reikis, but I, I mean, I've never been certified, but I also don't practice, uh, you know what I mean? Like the people that I give Reiki to, it's a consensual thing with spirit and us. It's not, you know what I mean? And when I do Reiki on these readings, I always say to you guys, if you want to accept it, you know? Um, but yeah, so I'm hearing definitely new growth, the next year is going to be a huge transformational year. So I feel like the spider and the ant are both, and plus that they're both in black. I feel like over the next year, some of you are still going through some dark night of the soul, some shadow stuff, and, and that's okay. That's where you're supposed to be, you know? Um, and so just let it happen. But in between that, it may feel like a roller coaster a little bit, but in between that, it's going to be good. It's really going to be good, okay? It's just that you're going to have, like, like right now, like I feel all of us are like, if you haven't like between now and like the next three months, like something really good's going to happen. And then like, you know, maybe you'll have a little dip down, something else will happen, but it'll feel like a bad thing, but it'll actually be a good thing. It'll be a clearing. 
Um, you know, like we've talked about in some of the recent readings, like, you know, maybe it's your car and somebody, you know, something happens, you're okay, you're safe, but they, you know, mess up your car and you're really upset. You're like, I want my car, I've had my car forever, but then you end up getting a better car and one that you really, that's better for you and your life now, you know, that kind of thing. Also, I keep seeing an eye right here. So for my scryers, um, I feel like spirit, um, I'm getting like an Egyptian vibe to work with more Egyptian energies. Okay. Ooh. And then we got the angel of love. Interesting that we had the angel of balance and then the angel of love. So, um, the angel of love is holding, uh, clear, excuse me, uh, uh, rose quartz crystal number 49. So we had 48 and we had 49. I have had this deck forever. <laughs> The fact that we had 48 and 49 together is not a coincidence. So we had the angel of balance and you know what? It's still on the bottom of the deck. So how crazy is that? Okay. So, so we've got the angel of balance and this is what I'm getting from spirit. Once you start balancing everything out, it'll feel a lot easier to bring that angel of love, the angel of mercy that you've been to others. It'll be a lot easier to bring her out. And also notice how the angel of balance is in shadow. And she's holding, it's it's almost like um like a little genie lamp or genie lamp. Hold on. Oh, you know what I was going to say? I don't think they'll let me pause it because I can't touch my screen. Yeah, that's why it's, um if it's out of focus, it's because that's how it's supposed to be. You know what I mean? And it could be some of you are feeling like that, like you're feeling like out of focus. Um, in fact, you know, what's interesting the angel of love card was the first one that I noticed was upside down. And they asked me to read it in reverse, um, that one first, before we go to the angel of balance. And it says in the reverse position, the angel of love could indicate a possible disconnect in matters of the heart. While this sometimes signifies a divorce or separation, it could also imply an emotional rift where two people stay connected on a superficial basis, yet at a deeper level seem to be going their own ways. In this position, the angel can also refer to an old separation if the longing remains alive in one partner's heart. And if you find yourself unable to let go, this loving angel is telling you it's time to release any toxic or unrequited attachment you may be holding on to. The universe is waiting for you to be free. Ooh, interesting. They had me read that, but this is what the book says. The universe is waiting for you to free your heart and open your life to the fully present and honoring love that you so rightly deserve. So look in the mirror and see the angel of love there with you. Know that you are worthy of this tender emotion from yourself and others. And it has an affirmation and it says, I love and value myself without limitation or condition. Tender, loving treatment comes to me in wonderful and unexpected ways. I'm going to actually take screenshots of these and put them in the community section for you guys. Because I think it's good for everybody, even if they don't watch this reading. That's a really good um, uh, mantra, affirmation. And so I'm going to go to the Angel of Balance, though, okay? Now, the Angel of Balance, I don't remember. I think it was like sideways. So I'm going to read it in its entirety. So it says the angel of balance being centered and self honoring in your choices. This loving presence holds a pitcher of liquid light in front of the pyramids. Isn't that interesting? We were just talking about Egypt. I didn't even see how like my, I'm not paying attention, but my, my, my subconscious is paying attention. This loving presence holds a pitcher of liquid light in front of the pyramids, reminding you that a strong destiny relies on a solid foundation of personal balance and emotional equanimity. Although things may have been out of sync in the past, this card is telling you that a greater equilibrium is now coming to your life. Remain conscious about how you are balancing your goals and your physical and emotional energy as well. Whenever you feel yourself getting off center or losing focus, call upon this beautiful angel and bring her intention into your heart center. Your intuition will lead you in the right direction and the angel will guide you to a peaceful and centered approach. In reverse, it says, in this position, the angel of balance comes with a loving warning that sometimes, oh, sometimes, see, mm, that something may be seriously out of proportion in your life. And now I'm hearing for some of you, not always, but sometimes, like maybe you're like going into the darkness too long. You know what I mean? 
This is very interesting. Oh my gosh. Thank you, Aunt Kim. I'm getting so many things here. It could be an important emotional component, such as the lack of self-acceptance or self-care. Remember, however, that when you put yourself last, the universe will do likewise. They'll do the same, right? So receiving this card reversed can oftentimes be a warning of lost energy, calling you to relax more, sleep more, or even just drink more water. And what are we in? We're in the last phase of the rest and restore. And normally I would say to you guys, like, look back, look at what's been going on in the last moon cycles. I feel like we'll get there next one, but we just had two fucking moon and Aries back to back, right? And like, that's intense. And we went in the light and the dark. We went, we went, we've done so much work that I feel like spirits like take a breather, which is why I don't know when I'm going to do the Jupiter and, and Taurus. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like I'm meant to take after this, I feel like I'm meant to take some time off too and just be with my love and just be in my world. So I'll keep you guys posted. But anyway, wow, really powerful. So do the same, you guys. Get more time to yourself. Sleep more. Relax more. Drink some water. Investigate how you may be out of balance in your time and energy regarding the externals and internals in your life. The adjacent cards in your spread could indicate the particulars. Perhaps you've been working too much or you're, you're or been too obsessed with relationships or money. This loving angel can help bring you the courage and wisdom you need to break such toxic patterns. Meditate on the angel's presence and visualize her pouring a beautiful liquid light through all of your chakras, balancing them and bringing you peace. Remember that you have all you spirit remember that you always have power to bring things back into peaceful balance and i saw the wizard of oz remember at the end where she says to to dorothy you had the power the whole time right but you had to go through this you had to go through that you had to learn the lessons that's why the wizard of oz is one of like the most beloved cherished movies because it came from a book and the books were the same thing like teaching us lessons about life and not taking things for granted, right? It's like the scarecrow, the tin man, like they're all just representations of ourselves. The scarecrow, our brain, our intelligence, our wisdom, the scarecrow, our heart, you know, that love, the lion, the fear, and the courage lies within the same, right? And even the lion to go as far as the spirit animal of the lion in the story. You know, it makes you look at everything and spirit wants you over the next year. And during this time, you know, when you're like resting, go into your fantasy place. Think about what does that mean to you? You know, all of these, like what, are, you know, like start thinking about like certain movies and books and, you know, right. Ooh, the bottom of the card is the thinking man, the thinking man. And maybe for some of you, you know, because we have a, we have a lot of, uh, we have just as much divine masculine in this tribe as we have feminine. I feel so blessed to have you here. Thank you so much. Um, you know, so this is like all of us, men, women, you know, divine feminine, divine masculine. This is about accompanying us as a whole, you know, um, interesting though, that, uh, that, that the goddess, you know, grandmother spider, the divine feminine came in, but also that ant held like a very strong male energy. Like he felt like the warrior ant going out to, you know, to get what we need. Interesting too. They're all holding something. This one is holding like this liquid courage, right? They're holding a heart. Oh my gosh. And he's holding a crystal. I mean, seriously, it's, it's like the wizard of Oz. What is happening? This is so powerful right now. I don't even know what to say. Oh my gosh. Mm. Look at this. Oh my gosh. Okay. So I'm going to see if they, I'm like, cause at the bottom of the deck is walking away number 27. And I don't even feel like I'm meant to read anymore. Or if, if they want me to put any more things in, I'll do screenshots and I'll put them in the community section for you guys. But I feel like we're wrapping this up. I I'm so proud of all of us. And look at 27 is the number nine. 46 is 10. 49 is 13 and 48 is 12. So for me, this is crazy because my birthday is December 13th. So 48 and when I see 48 and 49, I see my birthday. So what do you see when you see those numbers? What do you see when you see number 27, 46? Are these ages for you? Are these people? Are they, um, are they just numbers you keep seeing repeating of 46, 46, 27, 27, you know, like what are you seeing? But also, um, you know, I can't zoom in right now, but it doesn't matter. Look at how they're, they look back, but to see how the gate is like they're past the gate now. I feel like a year from now, you guys, every person who's watching this episode right now, every single one of us are going to be in the most beautiful, glorious place that we've ever, beyond our imagination. But for now, we have to picture ourselves here. 
This is this isn't an imagination. We we have, need to look at it. See how all three of them are looking down on something, but they're not actually like looking ahead. This one, she's like, I'm walking away. I'm out. Um, but she's doing it with, look at the beautiful flowy, there's no anger, there's no nothing. It's just like love and look at, we've got this beautiful light above here and this card is like popping out. Number 10, another 10, look at. And the storm warning, uh, this thing from spirit I'm getting is that if you keep staying where you are, this is what you're going to keep getting. And it's like, they're like, do you want this or do you want this? Because if you give what you always gave, you'll get what you always got. And if you keep participating in the same shit, you're going to still keep getting, you know. Um, when this happened with my aunt, I mean, of course I like wanted to. My mother just lost her sister. I mean, she was a beloved matriarch of our family. It's like she might as well have been our, she is an extension of our grandmother. I mean, obviously, but like beyond that, like she was like our, she was our person. And I don't think they understand that like now it's like it's passed on to me. And I know that now with every fiber of my being and whatever happens with my family and my friends, um, you know, uh, from my history to now until the future, I don't know what that holds, but it's like, I can no longer look back and let them define who, define who I am. It's like, I know that for a fact, like my aunt Kim and I had like, it was like a ceremony through meditation where I felt like she literally was like, it's, a, it's you now. Like you're the one, you're, you're aunt Kim, you know, just like, it's like every generation has that person. And I feel like for you guys, you know, you have to walk away for what, from what is no longer serving you. But also I'm really proud of you guys. Cause I feel like in the next year, if you haven't done it already, I feel like in the next year,